Mr. Adams, from one of your former students, Jonathan Henderson. When I found out that the Arts Association wanted to honor you during Black History Month, I jumped at the chance to give some beloved remarks. You have positively influenced the lives of thousands of students and definitely your influence has shaped who I am today. I have so many fond memories of you as a teacher and as a person, but I will only share a couple. First of all, I remember that several of us students earned the distinction of playing in a solo instrumental competition. Since there were only a few of us, you offered to drive us in your car. I know you loved white cars and at that time, for your short distance, you had an old white Maverick, but your travel in your church car was a white Mercedes Benz. I just knew that since we had a distance to go for the trip, that you would pull up in the Mercedes. But was I surprised when you rounded the corner in that old Maverick? Oh well, maybe next time. Secondly, I remember when I finally completed my medical training at Yale and Tufts University, finally becoming a doctor. You and your lovely wife, Mrs. Adams, called me and took me and my wife, Kiba, out for lunch. I really appreciated that and was so grateful. And boy, was I floored when you told me that you wanted to pay for all of my diplomas to be framed as a gift from you and your wife. Of course, you have done so many other things, but as far as I'm concerned, you're a saint on earth. So in tribute to you, I dusted off my old middle school trombone, I still have it, don't really play it much, and decided to play a brief rendition of When the Saints Go Marching In. I could. Here's to you, Mr. Adams. We love you and God bless. Yeah, I met Mr. Mr. TK Adams when I, uh, my wife and I moved back to New York County in 1993 and uh, saw an article in the paper that, uh, that advertised uh, that Mr. Adams was performing a community band and I decided I would go and I became a charge member of the band. Then I played trombone in my in high school, music was always a big part of my life in high school, but I hadn't had an opportunity since then, since high school, to, to really play. Because uh, you really needed an ensemble to be able to play and enjoy it. So I joined the community band in 1993. It's been a joy in my life ever since. Uh, I got to know Mr. Adams through, uh, through him being the director of the band, but uh, in several other several other cases, uh, he asked for a few volunteers to go to Atlanta with him to play in a, in a group that uh, in a band that his friend conducted. So we, we went to uh, we went to Atlanta to, to do that and play a concert. And during the times when we we go to Atlanta for rehearsals, I got a chance to really talk to Mr. Adams and, and uh, get to know him a lot better than just being a conductor. Uh, for the bands. Uh, over the years, uh, I've grown to, to love and honor him as, uh, of course, as for, his, for his music, but, uh, but also the type of man that he is. I think that uh, the thing that strikes him most, strikes me most about uh, T.K. Adams is that there's nobody he meets that he doesn't love and he doesn't care for and he doesn't uh, feel for. Before my wife Susan and I first moved to Covington in the summer of 1995, I realized there was something special about Mr. Adams. We had a contract to buy a house out on the west side of the county, and on July the 4th, we came to Covington to see the Newton County Community Band perform on the square. We quickly picked up on the fact, the crowd, the decorated tables, what seemed like a party on the square was celebrating not only the birthday of America, but also the man on the podium. While trying to get the Pride of Eastside off the ground, it took me a few years to become a regular member of the community band. But ever since, 
The lessons I learned with Mr. Adams on the podium have helped me be both a better teacher and a better person. There are things I watched him do and heard him say that completely changed my perspective and his lessons will stay with me forever. He is not a legend because he was a band director. He's a legend because he is an amazing human being, a great friend, neighbor, community member, leader, father, and husband, and so much, much more. When I first met Mr. Adams, I never dreamed I would one day have the honor of conducting the Newton County Community Band. In the summer of 2014, he pulled me aside before one of our Monday evening rehearsals. I sensed it was something significant, and it was. He talked to me about how he wanted me to take over the community band when he stepped down, but he didn't want an answer that night. He wanted me to first talk it over with my wife because he knew the commitment would need to be one with which she was on board if I was going to do a good job. As fate would have it, Susan walked in the door. Mr. TK was able to ask her if she approved of me taking the reins of the NCCB. Why? Because he understands husband and wife teamwork. The fact is, he and Mrs. Adams are and will always be role models for all of us. It is such a privilege to continue to lead his band, and I do hope that we will be able to continue to make him proud. In short, we are all better people because we know the Adams. <clears throat> my dad asked me to do two things in my life. Uh, to obey my mother and to get an education. Another thing that my dad said to me was, he would never make a promise to me that he couldn't keep. And I can honestly say in my 59 years of existence, my dad's never lied to me. So he set an example of being honorable and respectful. He set a bar for me that it's reachable, sometimes it seems unattainable. But, you know, it's really um, a blessing to have been his son. You know, he, uh, he committed himself to his wife, to me, my mother, um, to the community, God, music. And it's been um, a blessing to have him be a part of my life because he's been sort of the barometer for all of the things that I've tried to accomplish in my life and the things that actually happened, he's been in the front of the person I would look towards to make sure I was going in the right direction. And I think he was able to give that same kind of advice and love and support to an entire community. And, you know, what's, what's interesting is that, you know, my dad grew up in segregation, the height of it, you know, and then when we integrated, you know, he always had a world view life and also a world view of Covington and so by having that and having that energy in the house I've always felt that <clears throat> I could go anywhere in the world and because of that thought um, I was able to do it that he has touched so many lives and I think he's just as appreciative for the love that he's gotten as the love that he's given I'm happy I was asked to speak just briefly about my dad on Black History Month. But you know, when I think of my dad, I just uh, think of, of, of love and support and optimism. I mean, especially that's something we need now with uh, you know, how we're living in the pandemic and what's happening in this world societally, not only in this country, but on the planet. And once again, when I speak to my dad about this, and I have all my life, he's always had a, a very simple premise. It's like he would say, find your home and make it your, your kingdom. But as I've gotten older, I start to realize what he actually meant was, you know, you go, you get involved, and you have a real strong belief, you know, in God or whatever you decide you want to have your spiritual energy be. And that is what guides you and, and guides your decisions. So I'm just so happy that he's my dad. 
I love it. Amen. Peace and blessings to everyone. Ciao. Mr. Adams, on behalf of all of your Arts Association family, we thank you for being our leader, our mentor, our community band, founding director, our board member emeritus, our donor, our advisor, our cheerleader, our friend, and our living legacy during this Black History Month, February 2021.